Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Nunez. I'm a computer engineering student at Florida International University, graduating this fall. However, today I bring you some advice I wish that I could just tell everyone since a long time ago because I noticed this and I just want everyone to know because it's important. If you are taking circuits, circuit analysis, electronics one or electronics new, you need a circuits kit. Um, Electronics 1 and 2 uses their own kit, which builds off of the first one, is only some additional parts. And Circuit Analysis has the Fundamental Kit, which has uh, several components that you will be needing uh, throughout the course of the lab and even in the lecture if you want to use the circuits for studying. However, here's the major issue. A lot of people are intimidated by the idea of getting this materials list, which has a whole bunch of items they've never shopped for before. And then they go to a vendor such as DigiKey or Jamico or Element 14. And there's just all these weird things that they're trying to find. And it just makes it very difficult for a newcomer, you know, someone taking circuit analysis for the first time to actually find these things. And so what a lot of people end up doing is they end up going to the IEEE student chapter um, at FIU or maybe even at your own home institution and they end up paying like $100 for a honestly not very good quality circuits kit. Um, for example, they just throw in a, a resistor kit inside well, one of those like little booklet kits which has very thin leads that don't stay in place um, for jumper wires they give you like a plastic uh, container that has like the solid core style um, so you don't even get flexible uh, jumper wires which make life so much easier when assembling um, your circuits and, and just those types of things right and so I am doing the service I should have done a long time ago in making this video to help you, the viewer, assemble your own circuits kit using the materials list for FIU. However, I'm pretty sure this applies to any institution that you might be attending that provides you with a circuits materials list for your kit. So I'm not only going to be showing you how to shop for the parts, I'm also going to be showing you how I put them in containers. Um, let me just tell you, Harbor Freight is a great store for buying some very cheap containers and putting your circuits get together. Um, I personally have a hardware bag that I actually keep my stuff in and so I carry it around in the bag because I can put things in, take things out as I need them um, and it's just a nice bag to have it in because when I'm done at the end of the semester I can just put the bag away in my closet and I don't have to look at it until I need it again for a home project or something like that. So the whole idea here is we're trying to beat the $100 price point of the IEEE kit, um, while at the same time upping the quality of the parts that we're going to be using and potentially saving enough money to then go ahead and buy a good multimeter to start. That's a good thing to have around. No matter what type of engineer you are, having a multimeter is a very powerful tool to have in your arsenal. So right now we're gonna head over to Google and we're going to find out how to get the circuits list, the, the materials list that we need in order to actually buy these parts. So let's get started. Okay, so now we're here at Google. So this is very simple for FIU. You type in FIU circuits. The first link that says content of activities uh, circuits. Well, it's not that one. It's actually the second one, circuits-lab.eng.fiu.edu is the link you're looking for. This will take us to the web page that kind of does a little highlight of everything you're actually going to be needing in order to finish these labs. Um, the National Instruments My DAC is one of the first things you're going to notice that you actually have to buy here. It is quite expensive, so I'm gonna have to make a whole separate video about this um, because you might actually be able to get a alternative that does pretty much the same thing and it costs about half the price. So we're actually gonna be doing some research into that and making a whole separate video on how you can save a massive amount of money on the National Instruments uh, My DAC uh, data acquisition device that you'll be needing uh, for circuit analysis lab. So then here it, it includes a list of the different vendors that you can buy things at. Um, I personally, I would avoid Newark, also known as Element 14. I would avoid Radio Shack. Um, they actually charge a lot for parts. Um, in comparison to vendors such as DigiKey, 
uh, Mauser. Jamico can be a little bit more on the expensive side. So usually what you'll end up wanting to do is actually trying to, to kind of bias towards DigiKey. And, and if not, and if a part is not available in DigiKey, then you go look for it in Mauser and you'll get a much better price at these two vendors. And sometimes you might have even have some amazing luck um, getting some parts at uh, in Amazon as I have done sometimes. So for example, the jumper wires we're going to be buying, we're actually gonna be buying them in Amazon uh, because there's amazing prices on those flexible uh, jumper wires that we're going to be needing for the circuits kit. And so that is an amazing thing to actually get your hands on. Um, so then basically what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be going to the link here that says components and parts. And this is going to provide us with the links to the materials list that we need. So in your case, we're looking at circuits. However, if you're doing electronics, you're going to build your own kit for electronics. You can start here with electronics one or two. In this case, we're just gonna be clicking on circuits lab. It is then going to take us to the Dropbox where the link is actually available. And we'll actually be looking at it here. So what I would recommend is, is that you actually download the PDF and print it out so you can start checking things off as we go through the list. So the first part of the list here is it says, any resistor pack that includes a variety of 100 ohm to one mega ohm quarter watt resistors. And then it actually gives a list of the very specific resistors that you should actually have in this kit. So I will guarantee you um, that you're not going to use the majority of these um, resistors in your actual labs. So a good way to actually tell exactly what you're going to be needing if you're really pressed for cash is to actually go back, go to the content of activities. I'm actually going to open this in a separate tab and go through each of the seven circuits labs to see exactly what values you're going to be needing or the range of values that you're going to be needing so that you only buy what you need. However, my recommendation is that you go ahead and you buy all of the resistors listed because that will give you a good broad spectrum resistor kit that you can use in the future when you actually start working on some of your own projects and you might be needing some resistor values that you might have not used in class, but now you do need them for your own personal projects if you're going to be doing that. So if you know that you're not gonna be doing any personal projects, then you can just go ahead and just forego the majority of the resistors and only buy what you need, which is one of the benefits of building your own kit. You buy what you need. You don't have to buy the whole kit. You only buy what you need. So now, that those are the resistors. We'll get to that, right? When we actually start shopping for those. Shopping for them is incredibly easy, you're going to see. Next, we have ceramic disc capacitors, 25 to 50 volt with 10 to 20% tolerance. And then the four values of one microfarad, 0.1 microfarad, 0.01 microfarad, and 0.15 microfarad. Inductors, uh, these are actually gonna be probably the most expensive part, um, these inductors here. Uh, personally, I don't think we use the inductors until the very end of the semester when we were building some filters. However, we built RC filters, which are resistor capacitor filters. So if you want to forego the inductor and simply use the inductors that someone else might have in your lab, you know, just, just ask them to lend it to you real quick, um, you know, build a circuit. And once you need the inductors, you just borrow it really quickly, plug it into the circuit, take your measurements and then just give it back. The next is the LM741 operational amplifier. You'll be needing six of these. You can actually get these LM741 kits. Um, like, like, and when I say kit, I mean like a bundle of them um, on Amazon for extremely cheap. Uh, you'll get a lot of them. Um, you might even be able to split the cost with someone that's also going to, going to be taking the class and just give them half and you keep half since usually these come in like kits of um, five and you won't be using all six at one time. Uh, usually the reason why they say uh, get six is because you might plug this in the wrong way and then it might blow up. It doesn't actually blow up, it just releases smoke. However, I've never seen anyone in taking circuits, electronics one or electronics two, burn an op amp never seen it. Um, and there have been some very interesting people taking the classes with me. So um, I haven't seen anyone burn it. Next, you're going to be needing a one kilo ohm potentiometer, also known as a pot and a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. Um, these are also known as variable resistors, as they imply a one kilo ohm potentiometer can range from no resistance to one kilo ohm of resistance. Um, and then the 10 kilo ohm ranges from no resistance to 10 kilo ohms. And then finally, there will be a transformer here, which I actually have the box um, right here. This is 
the transformer. It's heavy. Uh, you won't be using this until the end of the semester. So when we get around to the assembling the circuit part, um, I mean the, the, the actual bag or kit, um, yeah, you're, you're not going to use this until the very end of the semester. So do not put this in your bag uh, because it's going to weigh you down and it just sucks to have this around all the time when you're not going to be using it. So then here, um, talks about how you will be needing breadboards. Um, I don't even remember. I bought three breadboards on Amazon for like super cheap. You can just get three of those. Uh, they also have the, the one that comes with the plastic backing and already has three on it. Um, what I would actually recommend is just get three separate ones and don't actually get the triple one because the triple one takes up a lot of space and you don't always need the three breadboards. Uh, so by having the three individual ones, you only use as much as you need and it helps you actually build circuits a lot faster because you don't have all this extra space that you're trying to accommodate for. Um, again, it'll talk about the, the National Instruments MyDAC. It'll recommend this uh, MyProto board. Uh, don't even worry about that. That's a ripoff. I actually bought it and I cannot recall how many times I used it. It was very few. Um, I should have just not bought it. It was like an extra $50 on the purchase uh, for something that, that I ended up barely using at all. And then lead set uh, to connect the experiments, uh, wire jumper kits, soft wire to connect circuits together. Now what they mean by soft wire is, let me, let me see if I have some, some soft wire lying around here. Um, I, have an, okay, I have an FPGA. So you'll notice here that this wire is flexible. It's, it's solid core. And this is usually what they give you in the IEEE kit. However, this is very difficult to work with in most cases. So for, for wiring power, buses and things like that, these wires are great. But for everything else, connecting components together and so forth, this is very difficult to work with. And you're not going to want to work with that. What you're going to want to work with is flexible leads that are like this. Let me grab two of these from my kit. Sorry about that, I banged my uh, pop filter. These wires, as you can see, they're flexible and they look flimsy, right? But that's what you want, right? These are flexible jumper wires that have um, the sleeving on the point as well as the wire exposed for actually plugging into the breadboard. This is what you want. As a matter of fact, you might even want to have a combination of both. Like I said, uh, the, the solid core wires are very good for actually wiring up buses and, and power on your breadboards. However, for then connecting the components, you're going to want a nice variety of these flexible ones. And you can buy those kits of flexible wire for super cheap, super affordable. It's, it's just very affordable. You're gonna save a lot of money and you're gonna have a lot more than everybody else. You're gonna have people coming to you asking to borrow things from you because you're going to have much better quality, much better equipment than everybody else for a much lower price point. Um, which is again why I'm making this video in the first place. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull over this uh, tab here to my other screen here, just leaving this here. And we're actually gonna head over to digikey.com to start shopping for some of the resistors. So I'm, okay. So when you arrive at Digikey, this is not like any shopping you've ever done before. This is actually very different for the most part. Um, and so you kind of have to build this intuitive sense of how to navigate these websites. So for example, just to give an example, um, you can type in resistor here, or you can come here to the side and you'll see passives, right? Capacitors, oscillators, inductors, variable capacitors, resistors. So in this case, we'll just go through the links, right? Resistors, because resistors are passive components. So we'll click on resistors. And now it actually gives you a variety of, transit of, of, of resistors, right? Because there are, in fact, an actual variety of resistors that you can actually use, right? They'll even offer you resistor kits, current sensing resistors, safety resistors, automotive resistors, power resistors. What we want is through hole resistors through hole resistors let me see if i have um some lying around here in my uh drawer so i can show okay perfect okay these are the kind of cheap ones that they would give you on your in in your kit these came with a kit i bought on amazon a while ago for for arduino um 
very very small let me actually pull up uh, my recording software so I can so I can actually see here uh, let me actually uh, change this real quick okay so you can actually see this so this is a through hole let me put my hand in front so you can actually focus on the resistor okay so this is a through hole resistor it has leads you can actually plug into a breadboard a more precise example of what these look like Make sure I'm putting this in the right place. I have a breadboard with a circuit I was working on back when I was taking the classes. So, okay, as you can see here, the resistors go into the holes on the breadboard. And these are actually the good quality ones that we're going to be buying. These have very strong leads. Let me pull one out for you. These have very firm leads that you can actually bend and work with. Great quality resistors and it's going to cost you less to buy the ones you need instead of buying the whole kit with crappy ones right so we want good quality here so let me just put this back in as another example um let me just show you the circuit again this this is the type of lead they give you in the kit natively and i had these connected as the power cables for these um for these transistors i had some more transistors over here and some switches um, and i was using the solid wire for actually connecting the the actual power however the actual signal connections between things i was using the flexible ones because it's a lot better so again we're going to click on through hole resistors here let me just switch back to the scene here so I switched tabs by accident because I was in uh, Firefox when I did the switch. Okay, so now you get this screen. And this is usually where people say, okay, screw this. I'm just going to buy the kit. I mean, it's a hundred bucks, whatever. Screw it, right? Don't freak out. This is actually very, very simple. So let me pull this over real quick again. It said here we need quarter watt resistors. That's pretty much about exactly as much information as we actually need about this. So I'm actually gonna put this over here and uh, let me just move this over here real quick. Okay, perfect. So the first thing we're gonna look at is tolerance. So the very, st okay, the, the, the lower the tolerance is, um, the more accurate your resistors are gonna be, right? A 10 kilo ohm resistor can't be exactly 10 kilo ohms. It's, it's very difficult to get exactly 10 kilo ohms. And you will see sometimes that you have a 10 kilo ohm resistor that's exactly 10 kilo ohms. However, that's very rare. So you have what's called the tolerance. The tolerance basically means this will be a certain percentage above or below this resistance that the resistor is labeled for. 1% tolerance is very high, it's very precise, however it costs more. So more than likely what you're gonna want to shop for is actually 5% or you might even be able to get away with 10%. Um, I would aim for 5%. So we go into the tolerance filter and we apply 5% tolerance now we needed quarter watt quarter watt one fourth of a watt so right next to it, it says power in watts right and we want to choose the setting that's 0.25 comma quarter watt then the resistance the first resistance on the list is 100 ohms so we're gonna just scroll through the list okay so you can just type on the keyboard you can just click on one of them for example, 98.4, I can go 100 zero, zero, and it'll actually take me to 100 ohms. So now I've selected 100 resistance in ohms, 5% tolerance, quarter watt. We are already inside the through hole, so we don't have to actually worry about the majority of these other settings here. And we just do apply filters, right? However, now remember, DigiKey is a massive parts distributor that distributes to major companies that are using tens, 20, 30,000 of these resistors. We don't need that many. So for example, we're gonna be plugging in 10. So we go into this little window here and we plug in 10. And what that's gonna do is, it's going to satisfy the minimum quantity, this column here that says, this is the minimum quantity that you need to order of this component so we do 10 so now we're filtering by resistance power tolerance up oh, and now all of these resistors are 100 ohm five percent tolerance 
quarter watt resistors, through hole, exactly what we need, minimum quantity order, one, and you can just look here at unit price. And you can even organize this by unit price. So you can see, like, can I get the cheapest ones? Right, okay, so right now we're filtering for the most expensive ones. So now we're just gonna do for the most cheap ones. 40 cents per resistor times 10, no, that's four cents per resistor. For 10 resistors, 40 cents. Good, strong quality resistors for that. And what you'll basically do is when you're done with that, you'll come here to the resistance filter and uncheck it. And you'll go back to resistance, look for the next one, 120, 120, apply filter. And once again, you filter the resistors and then you'll repeat that for every single one. And then when you're ready to add to your cart, what you'll do is you'll actually click on the component. You'll put quantity. 10. Now, the reason why I say 10 usually is because you get this price break because at different brackets, the more you order, the cheaper it is, right? So if I order 10, the price goes down from 10 cents per resistor down to 4 cents per resistor. So by ordering 10, you have some extra and it actually costs less per unit. So you actually probably be paying a lot less, right? If you get 5, you'll be paying 50 cents versus 10 at, at 4 cents, you'll be paying 40 cents. So you got a much better deal just by getting the 10. So you do add to cart. And then it'll add it to your cart. And you just continue shopping. Um, usually I would do a right click at the filter. So when you're at the actual filter, um, just do a right click to go to the product page. So do a right click and then go to the next one. And then that way you can just keep checking things off. And now we're going to go shop for the capacitors. Okay. So now we have the resistors. And now we're going to move on to the ceramic disc capacitors that are on the materials list. Again, let's take a quick look at that. They have to be 25 to 50 volts, 10 to 20% tolerance, 1 microfarad, 0.1 microfarad, 0.01 microfarad, and 0.15 microfarad. I'm just going to show you the 1 microfarad, and then it'll be pretty easy for you guys to do the other ones since it's a very, very similar process to doing the resistors. So in this case, we'll go back to the home page of the website and under passives again, we'll click on capacitors. And again, we're looking for ceramic disc. They're also known as ceramic. So just ceramic capacitors. So now there's a difference between the last one that we did and the current one that we did. If we take a look here, these are what are called surface mount components. And what we need to work with the breadboard is through hole. So there's going to be a filter option near the end here called mounting type. And we're going to choose through hole for these to make sure that we're only getting the through hole type that actually have the little legs that we're going to be putting in the breadboard. From there, we go back in the filtering settings and we choose tolerance. We're looking for 10 to 20%. So we'll go ahead and choose both 20 by using control click. We'll use 20 and 10. Obviously 20 will be cheaper because of the broader spectrum. However, if you want higher accuracy, you can, you can get 10% and it'll be a little bit more expensive, but you will get that smaller threshold of, of the margin for error. As well, voltage rating. We want 25 to 50 volts. Higher voltage ratings will be more expensive. Smaller voltage ratings will be less expensive. For this case, we're going to choose 25 because uh, as far as circuit analysis is concerned, we're not actually working with these really big voltages. So getting a 25 volt rated is actually more than enough for our case. Finally, we'll select what we're looking for, which is zero point, well, we're first looking for one microfarad, which is right here. Click on that, apply filters. Once again, we're gonna choose the quantity in this case, sorry, in this case, I'm gonna choose 10 again, hit enter. And so now you'll notice that capacitors are inherently more expensive than resistors, which makes perfect sense. Uh, capacitors are a more difficult type of passive component to create. So they're a little bit more expensive. And by a little bit, I mean, they're actually 
decently more expensive. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and just buy what we need. Um, again, we do the whole 10 units so we can get a discount. Um, so here we have um, the first one here. Uh, let me just do unit price cheapest to most expensive, which is the way it is currently right now. Let's right click and open the tab on this type of capacitor here. And it says that the unit price for 10 is 23 cents per unit at 10 quantity versus 32 cents per unit at one quantity prior to 10. So I have my calculator here. So let's look at what five times 0.32 is. It comes out to $1.60 versus 10 at 0.23, which comes out to $2.03. So in this case, um, actually buying less and only buying what you need might be a better bet. However, there is also another choice that you have when buying um, capacitors. The, 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 and, and that choice is buying a kit that brings a whole bunch of values and you might end up paying like $8, for example, and you get a whole bunch of values. However, we're not gonna be using a lot of values. Really, the only values we'll be using are the values that are here. So you can do what I did and I only actually bought a few. Um, I'm pretty sure I only bought like three or four um, capacitors of each value. Um, at any given time, you might be using one or two of them. And as long as you take care of them, they won't break. So you really shouldn't have an issue with it. So in this case, very similar process to what we did before. We'll go ahead and choose the quantity. Um, sorry, my closer product page. Um, you'll go ahead, choose the quality, add to cart, and you'll just go back to the other tab. You'll remove, in this case, the capacitance value uh, filter in, under applied filter. And then you'll go back and choose a new value and you keep going through like that. And so then the next thing we'll be needing is inductors. So we're gonna go here to the front page again, inductors, coils, and chokes. They're all part of the same family. However, in this case, what we want is, um, Let's just choose the general filter. Fixed inductors. And then again, we want through hole, not surface mount. And for the inductor, it doesn't actually give us a lot of ratings in terms of frequency, tolerance, and so forth. So we're not even going to check off any of the tolerance ratings. We're just going to leave that as it is. And we're just going to choose by the inductance, which in this case is one millihenry. So we're going to do one millihenry, check, apply. And then we're going to do, again, 10. I always choose 10 as the arbitrary filtering setting um, by quantity, so that actually shows me the price at 10. However, in this case, let's go by one because we're actually not gonna be buying um, many of these. I actually only bought one of each. Um, I didn't buy a lot of them because they are a lot more expensive as you can actually see here. So I'm gonna choose one, hit enter. You see, it's like 54 cents for one of these, for just one. Um, at the current uh, filtering setting. However, I'm gonna flip these and yeah, so 45 cents for one of these um, that look like a resistor, but it's not a resistor. Keep that in mind. There's different types. Uh, there's this type that looks like a resistor, but it's not actually a resistor. There's this type, um, which is similar to the type that I have. Um, however, I just recommend you buy the cheapest one you can get your hands on. Again, you probably won't be using this until the very end. And if you just decide that you want to um, just not buy some and just borrow some during your your lab period then that's perfectly okay so that leaves us with the lm741 operational amplifier and the one kilo ohm and 10 kilo ohm potentiometers as well as obviously the transformer and the red boards that we still have left as well as the jumper wires which we also need and again um i think i already mentioned the breadboards so let's go ahead and I'm stepping on the wire under the desk. Okay, so the 
potentiometers. Let's look at those first, since we're already here on DigiKey. You can get like potentiometers for expensive, cheaper, doesn't really matter which one you get. Um, I just recommend, you see, look, uh, under passives, potentiometers, and variable resistors, I accidentally clicked on um, normal ones, so potentiometers, variable resistors. So you can get kits, or you can just get the actual potentiometers, variable resistors. Let's click on that category. And then um, there's different types of potentiometers. In this case, um, what we want is trimmer, which are these kinds here. So these can be a lit, they can be pretty expensive. Um, again, we want through hole and we want 1K and there are none of those available um, here. However, you can get a 10 kilo ohm, uh, it's $1.25 um, minimum quantity one. You can get this one. Um, I don't know, uh, the whole idea is the potentiometer, again, remember it's from zero resistance to 10 kilo ohms of resistance or zero to one kilo ohm of resistance. So really you could just get the 10K and use that. Um, usually when we end up using potentiometers, we never use these low resistances of like one kilo ohm. Uh, some, some projects call for a hundred kilo ohms on your pots. Um, so in this case, you can get away with the 10k. So now that leaves us with going to Amazon to actually shop for the actual uh, LM741s and let's see if we can find some of those pots there on Amazon. Okay, so now we're here on Amazon. So the first thing we're going to look for is the LM741. As we can see here, 10 of these will run you seven dollars with prime you get them in two days so now again let's do a price comparison against um digikey because you know we want to see side by side what is the better deal now one of the things about digikey that i personally do not like at all is their shipping prices. Um, first of all, when you order, they don't tell you what the shipping price is going to be immediately. It takes about a day or two for them to actually get back to you on how much they're going to charge you for shipping. So here I'm looking at the LM741. This is actually the one I bought. You can see the link has already been clicked. That's the one that I bought. It's a 66 cents per unit. Uh, and it says that you only need six of these. You can get away with five of these. However, um, 10 times 0.66 is uh, $6 and 60 cents and on Amazon they're charging you just seven dollars for so for a few cents more you get prime shipping you get it in two days uh, you can buy it right here and uh, it's still good it's the LM 741 uh, you can totally use this package so you can go ahead and get it here on Amazon again you just search LM 741 and you get that so then in this case now I'm gonna say 1k you see and it just pops up and you can get these uh, but these require that you actually solder a um, a wire that you will then actually plug into your breadboard. So that's not the type we want. However, you can get something like this, these 10-piece, uh, 1 kilo ohm trim pot, tr uh, trim type um, potentiometers that are like this. And the way these work is you take a small little screwdriver and you slot it inside that little screw terminal. And that's what adjusts the actual um, resistance on the actual device. However, if we scroll down one here, we have also these types here that saddle the middle part of your breadboard. Um, these types are also good. So the way these work is, um, you can see it has those three legs and it has that spacing. And so let me switch back here to the, um, here we go, to the full board view. You see this middle ridge here, that trim pot will sit here on this middle part and saddle that onto either side. 
Um, more on breadboards in another video if you guys want to see me explain how breadboards work because I know that a lot of the lab instructors at FIU do a horrible job of explaining how breadboards work. So if you guys want me to do a video about how these things work and how to build some basic circuits on them, um, I, I can totally make a video. But the point is that these trim pots, uh, the second type that I pulled up there, are the type that you would actually um, go ahead and saddle on that middle ridge there. So since we're already on Amazon, we might as well look at the breadboards, one, and the jumper wires, two. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at are the jumper wires. Very simple, jumper wires. Now, the type you're looking for are these, male to male. Specifically, a kit like this that brings 100 wires. For $7.29, 100 wires is a lot. You get, as you can see here, let me pull up the image here. You get the long ones, the mid-sized ones, and the short ones. And you can organize those in a little um, container, like I will show you a little later how I did with mine. And you have yourselves flexible jumper wires. Great stuff. Everyone should have them. Then, you might also want to buy some alligator clips, which are these types with a little... Um, I don't know if I have any lying around here. I don't think so. I have them all in my bag. Um, you might want to buy some of those. However, you can get those at Harbor Freight. So you're probably going to end up going to Harbor Freight. If you don't have a Harbor Freight near you, um, which I hope you do, but if you don't, you can order them online. But look for the cheapest ones you can get. They don't have to be the best. Uh, what those are going to help you do is sometimes you have to connect things in very weird ways over certain distances that are just kind of awkward. Um, like if uh, you're using a power supply or whatever, you have to actually uh, clip the alligator clip onto the uh, banana terminals to actually get your power. So you might want to get a pair of those. They're really cheap. Um, I got a set with like a whole bunch of colors at Harbor Freight for like a few bucks. It was super cheap, super affordable because the type you get um, in the kit are these types. Again, I mentioned the whole solid core idea. Um, you get these types. Uh, if you want to buy these extra and you can get them super cheap, I wouldn't pay more than three or four dollars for this. Um, here you can see 728. I would not pay 728 for solid core um, jumper wires like this. Um, just, just don't. Um, but this is the type you get in the actual kit, and these are great for for wiring uh, buses and, and and so forth. But I, I personally just really do not like them for for wiring signal um, and stuff like that. And what I mean by the alligator clips are these types of connectors here. Again, I would not pay 767 for these. If you can, if you have a Harbor Freight or a local electronics store and they have these for a few bucks, um, get them for a few bucks, not 768. That's too expensive. So now let's go back up to the search here and let's look up breadboard. And yeah, so this is the, the, uh, these are breadboards. Um, you can buy this, right, is what I meant by the triple uh, breadboard with the plastic backing. But look at how much that costs. It costs almost $30. That's really expensive. You really do not want to pay that. Um, instead, you can get this Elegu um, 3 kit. I bought this uh, personally for myself. These are incredibly high quality breadboards. You get three of them for just eight eighty six, And you can go to your local craft store or your local Home Depot and get a little piece of plastic and you can stick these because they have adhesive backing. As you can see here, you can pull off the adhesive backing and stick them onto whatever you want or just leave the adhesive backing on there and just use them as they are currently uh, separate like that. Um, so you can use as many as you need. So again, a lot cheaper, get these um, Elegu uh, 3 uh, breadboards. So there are the long ones this length um, here. Uh, there also are half ones that are this length. Again, this is an Arduino, um, but there's this is like a half one. So two of these make up the other one. Um, however, the other one is an actual just full length one made up of one uh, solid piece of breadboard there so you'd be getting three of these really good quality ones here that, that you can see here these are really sturdy really good you get three of these for just about nine dollars on amazon with prime so you get it in two days along with your lm 741s of which you're going to have quite a bit along with your jumper wires which also have prime um, so for very little money you get your three breadboards your jumper wires and your lm 741s on amazon um for that so as far as digikey is concerned 
I mentioned prior the whole idea that they don't charge you the shipping immediately. Um, I've actually logged into my account here, my DigiKey. I'm actually going to go back to one of my prior orders here um, to review the order so I can show you. Okay, here we go. So here, I bought a few of these, some of the better quality ones as well as the trim pots, which they had at the time. Um, you might want to check if they have these. Again, they're 153, one, you know, uh, you can get these on Amazon or a whole bunch of them. I only got one of them. Um, I don't know how many they have. Uh, you can buy these, these are the ones I have. Um, you can actually go to DigiKey and plug in the parts numbers like this, grab the parts number, copy, and then paste it up here. And it'll actually pull up the actual product for you. So there's those product numbers. So I'm actually going to leave these up here for a sec. So you can pause the video and look at the parts numbers. And I, um, if you guys want, I can actually put these in the description. Or I can actually export the entire cart as a CSV file that you can then import into your own DigiKey and just buy every single thing that I bought um, as it is. However, I cannot guarantee uh, the maxim, uh, maximum affordability that, that, that I got because... Um, I mean, this this isn't even the most optimum cart, to be honest. I mean, just with time, I've uh, I've learned how to better shop for these things, and so it's actually a much better deal. Uh, another thing that affected my shipping price was the fact that I wanted UPS ground. I personally like UPS. I'm willing to pay a little bit more for UPS. Um, however, I do believe that they actually offer um, that they actually do offer. So again, it was 1606 for all of these components. 1606. Um, I duplicated the cart here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do estimate shipping to Miami again for the people that actually live here. Um, and usually, people have residential address. I'm putting in my zip code, uh, three three one seven seven. I'm going to calculate the different shipping costs. So you can get U.S. Postal Service for eight ounces, three thirty-nine. You see, I paid for UPS Ground, so I ended up paying like thirteen dollars, which is a lot more. Uh, so if you're really pressed for cash, you can just get U.S. Postal Service first class um, for eight ounces. I mean, the the, the package is very light; um, shouldn't weigh a pound at all. But you know. Um, even if it weighs a pound, they'll charge you, what, $7.75 for shipping. From DigiKey, you get all your resistors, all your caps, your trim pot. Um, I even ordered my LM741s from, actually, uh, DigiKey, because I ordered as many as I needed. Um, so, again, this, these are the shipping rates that you'll be getting at DigiKey if you use the U.S. Postal Service. Super cheap. Um, again, if you want UPS Ground, it's going to run you a little bit more, almost twice as much. Uh, for UPS ground. So if you're really pressed for cash, just get USPS. Um, it shouldn't be that much of an issue. Um, should be good. So that finally leaves us um, with the transformer, the Jamico part number 149797. So we're going to go here to jamico.com. Part number 149797. Yes. So the transformer will run you $13.95. It is expensive. It is a center tap transformer and it can handle mains voltages. However, here's the thing about the lab you're going to be doing. Since you're expected to use the MyDAC, the MyDAC has USB level voltages that it actually uses to output the signal. So you're actually going to be using the transformer for a very, very small voltage that is nowhere near mains voltage. So I wasn't planning this, but I'm going to go back here to Amazon. And I'm going to look up a transformer. Transformer. And of course I get transformers, right? 
center tap. So, see, cheaper ones with prime, 6 volt, that is more than enough here, more than enough. Honestly, you can absolutely get away with these uh, Fillmore 6 volt, 9.95, more than enough, perfectly good. They even have the Jamico ones here. Um, I'm not sure if they're the same type, but if you want to grab one of the Jamico ones while you're here, because you get Prime for about the same price. Where's Jamico? $13.95. Uh, for a few dollars more, you get Prime shipping. So, yeah, I personally, you're going to use the Transformer one time for that lab. So, again, if you want to borrow it, go ahead and borrow it. Um, most lab instructors are really good about letting you borrow things. As, as a matter of fact, a lot of lab instructors actually require that you team up with people and so that you share. So if someone has a transformer, you can just team up with them and you solve your problem. Or if you want to buy your own, again here, Fillmore 6 volt AC 300 milliamp power supply transformer with center tap for $9.95. Save a few bucks, get it on Amazon as part of your other order. You get it all in two days. Perfectly great. So that is the materials list for circuits lab. So now let's change the scene and let's go actually look at my kit and how I put my kit together. So you can get some ideas of how you can put it together. And then we're gonna kind of run the money uh, to see just how much all of this would cost us. I'm gonna make an Excel spreadsheet and we're gonna look at the total cost and then we can head back to Amazon and see if we can buy ourselves a handy dandy multimeter that's gonna be very handy for doing our own measurements. So let's get to that. Okay, so now here we're looking at my engineering mat, and my nails need to cut them. Um, so basically, you can go to Harbor Freight, or you can possibly order a plastic container like this. I, I literally go to Harbor Freight, and I always keep at least a few of these in my closet um, for when I buy new electronic stuff. And so I keep them in these containers, and these containers are absolutely great. They don't have to be the most expensive things in the world again you're just keeping little things in there that that are not heavy they're they they don't weigh much and and so you can get a few of these literally the whole entire circuits kit can fit in three of these that's not including the my deck um you can fit jumper wires resistors and the other components in three of these comfortably organized and ready for use little to no problem on the website for harbor freight it says that these cost three dollars each i'm pretty sure i've gotten them cheaper at harbor freight and i'm pretty sure that every single time harbor freight is sending out coupons wow that's a loud car so every single time harbor freight sends out coupons they usually have coupons for these containers in there so use the coupons get them for cheaper get a whole bunch of these keep them with you you never know what you could use these for so now let's look at the actual circuit stuff so the first thing is the circuit kit so i have its own box Right? Let me turn it towards you so you can actually see it, right? So I just label maker, you can use a Sharpie, just write it on there and just put resistor kit. Pop. I'm doing this backwards. It's kind of awkward. So anyways, you see, boom, I have all my resistors. I actually have one of my um, potentiometers from another kit that I bought. This actually came with an Arduino kit um, that I'm using. So let me just not put that there and then um, this small resistor is also not part of the kit. This is the actual kit itself. So what I did is I went into Word, I measured this space here, and I did a table with the cells, the size of each space, and then I just used some scotch tape, you know, rolled up on itself and put, you know, pasted this in there with the different values. And then I went ahead and organized all the resistors by value the resistors come straight, but I use some pliers, which you can also get at Harbor Freight. Um, there's a whole kit of pliers that comes, and you get a set of pliers for pretty cheap. You get some wire cutters, and literally the two pliers you're going to use the most are wire snippers. These are flush type, and these curlies. Uh, I, I call them the curl one. Um, you use this to bend the leads on the resistors when the when they come straight you literally just take it and you bend the leads and it's going to take you a bit again if you get 10 of each that's like 
almost a hundred resistors, but get yourself a cold soda or tea or hot coffee or whatever you like to drink. If you're of age, you can get yourself cold beer. You can sit down and you can just start bending these and it's super therapeutic, I promise. Like you do a hundred of these and if you were upset about something, you're gonna be totally okay by the time you're done. Promise you, very therapeutic process. But the point is, you organize it like this, boom, super great. You can find what you're looking for. Your resistors aren't all over the place. They're in a nice little container. The container might run you like two bucks. Um, great stuff and then it just makes it very easy to find and when you're done you put them back in their place you close it you pop the latches and oop i hit the filter again and then you just put it off to the side next is the circuit slab and this is everything else that wasn't the resistors again i did a similar thing as before i measured and you see here i put my op amps uh, don't worry about these components as I just threw them there. Those are some diodes. And then I just basically did the same thing for all of them else. And this is my circuit analysis bag. As you can see, there's a label that says circuits. So I know, I've, I've grown to know that if I'm looking for my caps, if I'm looking for my pots, if I'm looking for my operational amplifiers, then I know that they're going to be in the circuit slab box. And you can, it has its own dedicated box. Then finally, we have one without labels. This is just for your jumper wires. Again, organize your jumper wires. You have your jumper wires, you know, the shorts, the, the, the medium sized ones, the long ones. You have them all nice and organized and you can find them. And again, that's just three containers for all of your stuff three that is absolutely great and then while you're at harbor freight you can get yourself your plier kit these are just two of the things that come in that kit uh, the kits like nine or ten bucks but it brings a whole set of pliers super handy stuff to have around you get that set it's going to be very very powerful to have so now let's go check those prices to see just how much these components cost uh, one versus the other. Let me run those numbers real quick and then we'll switch on over to Excel and we can have a quick conversation about those and see just how much money we saved on those components. So we're back and now we're looking at Excel. So I put everything together um, from DigiKey. I put the resistors, the capacitors, the inductors, the pots, the operational amplifiers. I, I, I put those in DigiKey for the cost of 1412 using my cart, what was my cart, not what you would be doing now. It would actually cost you less, right? The shipping 775 with a one pound USPS priority mail for a total of 2187 from Amazon. Almost burped, sorry. Please excuse me. Amazon jumper wires, the breadboards, the transformer 729, 886, 995. Prime shipping, you can get Amazon Student for free for six months, so shipping is nil, will add up to 26.10. Then if you go to Harbor Freight, you get three of the containers, assuming they do cost $3 and you don't use a coupon. And if you get yourself a $10 bag to put everything in, we'll run you $19 for a grand total of $66.97 giving you savings of $33.03 over the IEEE kit. So here you're getting better quality, better organization, better prep for $33 less. There's just so much. So then I promised multimeter. So here is my multimeter. This is a multi-function. Let me switch over to Open Broadcaster here real quick so I can change the view. This is a multi-function multimeter. That's why they call it a multimeter. I can test AC voltages, DC voltages, DC currents, AC currents. I can measure resistance. I can do diode checking, continuity testing. I can do capacitor testing. I can do transistor testing. I can do frequency checks and duty cycle analysis, all with this multimeter. So now let's go back to Amazon and let's see what multimeter we can get for less than $30 with the savings that we had by making our own kit. Cars beeping outside because, you know, just. Just 
multimeter. So here we have all kinds here. Any of these could do, honestly. Uh, look at this one, $32. Uh, this one's really crappy. Let's see how much mine costs. Let's see if we can find mine here in the in the picking. My Mastec. This is mine right here. $27 with Amazon Prime. Great multimeter. I've been using this for years, for years. It's still handy dandy, still trusty. I use this religiously all the time as a computer engineer that also does home repairs, that also likes to do personal projects and so forth. And I use this a lot. I use this a lot. I just had to repeat it because it's literally that important. You can get this for $27 and you're going to be using this all the time, I promise. So anyways, as I promised, in the video description I will be providing links to the um, pots that, that I used that were on my list. I will be providing the DigiKey parts numbers. I will be also providing a, a link to the CSV of my cart. Again, if you want to save some money, make your own. You'll actually end up saving some money um, since prices have changed a bit and there are things that are a little cheaper than before. So doing your own cart will save you a few bucks. I will also provide links to the breadboards, everything that's from Amazon. I will provide a download link to the container template um, so you can fill out your values, or if you bought the same values, you can just plug it in as it is and use it as it is inside the containers. So I would like to thank you very much for sticking with me for this massive amount of time. I know this video was long, but I hope I was able to save you a pretty good amount of money. Doing this yourself very quickly does not take as long as this video is long. It's actually very fast. Um, when I did it the first time completely without experience, it took me like 30 minutes to do. Um, this video was a little bit longer because I was explaining things and kind of uh, you know educating you so that you can make more educated decisions uh, moving forward in your future labs. Uh, so instead of buying these overly priced kits, you can make your own kits moving forward. Um, so, I, so I really hope you learned something here. I, I really hope this helps you. I really hope this allows you to save a few dollars given that being a college student can be very difficult sometimes financially. Uh, please leave a comment if you like the video tell me what you liked about it if you didn't like it Tell me what you didn't like about it. Leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down um, subscribe if you like the content and uh, I hope to see you next time and have a great day